Welcome to our second video on Year 10 Evolution. In this video, we are looking at patterns of evolution and speciation. As we start looking at this whole concept of speciation, we need to have an understanding of some differences in skeletal structures and the importance they play in understanding evolution. So when we observe the structure of skeletal systems, so we're talking about skeletons, similarities can be found between many species. Now, we can separate these similarities into two categories as such. There are our homologous structures and our analogous structures. So starting off having a look at our homologous structures, and you'll see here we've got four different limbs of some animals, okay? So homologous structures occur in species that are somehow related in their evolution, okay, and their ancestry. Now the characteristics have the same, and the structures have the same basic structure. Okay, so the features have got the same basic structure. So if you have a look at this, you can see that on the bat, the whale, the cat, and the human. If you have a look at the dark brown skeletal parts, so the fingers on the human, the foot on the cat, the whale, like the long tendril kind of thing that's part of the fin, and the long finger-like structures that are part of the bat's wing. They all have a very, very similar basic structure. However, they do not necessarily have the same function. So our fingers don't do the same thing as a cat's foot, definitely don't have the same role as a whale's fin, and tend not to have the same function as a bat's wing but they're the same structure, different function. So as I said, the bone arrangement is quite similar, indicating that these animals are closely related or have that common ancestor. Now, when we look at analogous structures, these occur in non-related species. The characteristics, so the feature has the same function. So if we have a look, we are looking down the columns, okay? So the first column there is our, or sorry, second column, analogous leg. So we're looking at two legs, the leg of a cat and the leg of a praying mantis. Okay, same function, they're legs, but they are not the same basic structure. Okay, because, so this is all color coordinated. You see the bright blue of the base of the praying mantis's leg. Okay, whereas the foot, and the kind of shin bone of the cat as such, completely different feature. Same function, okay, because they're both legs, but completely different structures. So analogous, same function, different structure. Homologous, same structure, different function. Okay, so with an analogous, it shows organisms are not related and they don't have a common ancestor. So the praying mantis and the cat, they don't have a common ancestor, even though they have legs, their legs are very different structures. Okay, when we look at the flippers, we've got a whale's flipper and we've got a water boatman's flipper. Very, very different in structure, but they both do the same thing. The good thing on this table is you've then got homologous there. So you've got your homologous mammal. So you've got the cat leg and the whale flipper. They have similar structure, but completely different functions okay and the same with the insect you've got the praying mantis leg and the water boatman flipper leg different functions how they work but very different very similar structures okay so homologous same structure different function analogous same function different structure two opposites Alrighty, so now we've got an understanding of skeletal features and that homologous structures Let's have a think about patterns of evolution. So we've got two patterns of evolution that we're going to look at. Divergent evolution and then convergent evolution. So when we start with our divergent evolution, let's have a look at the picture here. And this kind of gives it away. We have a parent species and other species diverge from that. They come to like a T junction, that's a Y junction, and off they go into different species. So we have one parent species that gives rise to two or more species with very different, with different characteristics. 
the accumulation of differences between groups of the same species lead to the formation of two new species. Due to different groups of the same species undergoing different selection pressures, for example, environmental or predators, etc. So our species have been in two different places and they've, yeah, those pressures, selection pressures have made them two different species. Now, convergent evolution, we've got two parent species that come together to make a new species. So organisms which are not closely related independently evolve similar traits as a result of having to adapt to similar environments, so similar selection pressures. All right, from that, so we've looked at this whole idea of selection pressures and things like that. Let's look at how a new species is formed. I've got some flies there looking at speciation. All right, we've got a diagram there of Darwin's finches that we've spoke about many times. So speciation, this is a process where one species splits or diverges into two or more species. And it involves three main steps. We've got that variation that we already know about. Then we have what we call isolation. And then we have selection. Let's look at those a bit closer. So first of all, variation. We know about variation. Okay, For a new species to occur, there must be differences in the original species. So when you think about um, Darwin's finches, they had those different beak structures. Our next step, we've got these differences in species as differences in terms of variation. Now our species need to become isolated for each, from each other. Okay, that's reproductively isolated. So they can't cross reproduce. They're in their own little species set as such. So usually this would be by some kind of geographic feature. Okay, and we call it reproductive isolation because this, they can't reproduce across those, across the barrier as such. So individuals are isolated, the groups cannot interbreed, okay, they can only breed in their own set groups. Therefore, there's no flow of genes between the two isolated groups. If new genes occur in one group, they may not reach the other group. So we've got these lobsters here that are um, isolated by Panama. Okay, so if there are some genetic variations in the lobsters to the north there, they wouldn't, the genes aren't going to cross. There's no reproduction between the two groups of these lobsters. So speciation would occur. So occurs can be geographical. They can also be climatic barriers. Alrighty, now we've got the concept of selection that we spoke of before. The groups are divided. And they may encounter different selection pressures in their different areas. Isolated groups then respond to their respective selection agents. This then results in different phenotypes and therefore different genotypes between the groups. Over time, these genotypes are passed on. And over a long period of time, a new species will arise. So a bit like Darwin's finches. And this diagram shows that speciation. So you've got your original species that are then somehow affected either by a geographic or a climatic barrier. And due to that, one on this diagram, one of those groups have come under some kind of selection pressure. And over time, two new species have been developed. Thank you for watching this video. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel.